Hello everybody and welcome to episode 19 of Grim Scenarios. I am your host Milk and I am here on this wonderful Wednesday with my always co-host Emma. Hello Emma, how are you? Hey, how's it going Milk? Ah uh, well, you know, uh, another wonderful day of Clock Tower and Grim Scenarios of course always being the highlight of our day. We are going to be we're going to be going back a little bit now, uh, looking at a few things that we wanted to look at before, kind of catching a few things that we might have missed from the base 3 before we dig further into experimentals, before we get to Las Vegas. Um, so, this week we're going to be looking at Sects and Violets again. Uh, I've been playing a bit of Sects and Violets recently actually. Um, gotten a couple of games of S and V in and they've been pretty fun. Um, but uh, for scenario number one, it appears that I am going to be sitting here in C12, and uh, I think I think Emma, what am I gonna be what am I gonna be playing today? Yeah, you are going to be playing as the artist, a Sex and Violets Towns book that we wanted to cover because the artist has you know the ability to really craft their own information in a way that no other character really does. At least not any really characters that I know of. The artist sort of. Decides what they want to know about the game state. I guess the gossip is a little. They're a little similar. like the gossip, which we've talked about before. But the artist, unlike the gossip, the gossip has to kill people to get information, but it gets to get information repeatedly. Whereas the artist only gets to get information once, so it has to really decide: what does the artist want to know about this game? When do they want to know it? How long do they think they can survive to gather more information before they ask their question? All these are things. All these things are things Milk's going to have to think about. Yeah, a lot of artists on Sex and Violets will use it early. We'll use it right away to try to solve uh, solve one of the big questions of Sex and Violets. Yeah. And without much further ado, let's head to the Grim and see where we're sat. All right, so Milk, you are in seat 12, and you have the artist token, which is, I'm sure, exciting for you. It's exciting for me. So... Many times uh, in Sex and Violets games that I've played or story told, the artist will immediately go talk to the storyteller and use their question on day one to do one of two things. Thing number one is try to solve whether or not it's a Vortox game by asking a question with an objectively true or false answer. Um, something like, is 2 plus 2 4? Or, depending on your storyteller, asking something like, am I the artist? Right, Depending on uh, whether your storyteller is going to accept non-game-related questions. Uh, they should, but you know, some storytellers like to balance it uh, in some different ways. Um, the other, the other uh, thing that's very common uh, with the artist is to do something like what the, um, what the gossip often does, which is split the town in half by saying, uh, is the demon seated between seats, you know, four and nine clockwise inclusive? I'm not going to do either of those things, uh, because there are many roles that can solve whether it's a Vortox game. So the artist isn't solely responsible for solving that. Uh, usually a town within a couple of days can figure out it's a, it's a Vortox game. There's lots of roles that can do that. The Oracle can do that. The town crier and flower girl can do that in specific situations. Uh, the mathematician can do that. The dreamer can do that. A lot of roles, juggler, you know, a lot of roles can figure out whether or not it's a Vortox game. So that's not that's not how I want to use my artist ability. And I'm not going to divide the town in half because there are demons that can move on this script. So mm. that being the case, knowing where the demon starts on day one may not necessarily be that helpful. So we're not going to use it on day one. All right, that's good to know. Well... That's not your final answer, because I'm going to let you get three pieces of information from any of the three characters on the Grim first, and then I'm going to ask again whether you want to use your ability. All right, let's uh, let's just start with uh, let's start with the character in seat eleven. I'd love to know what seat eleven would like to share with me. These are not in any particular order. These are just pure like information drops of what this person would have said to you during the day, mm -hmm. regardless of what order it was. Yeah. So seat eleven tells you they are the Town Crier in an evil twin pair with seat four. The town Crier is in an evil twin pair with seat four. All right, great. 
So one of the two of them is the town crier. One of the two of them is the evil twin. Unless they're lying. If they're telling you, yeah. Yeah. Some people do like to do fake evil twin stuff. I do like to do fake evil twin stuff. It's a lot of fun. All right. So those are those are potentially evil twins. Yeah. Let's go for seat seven. Because I don't like seat symmetry. Seven. All right. Uh, seat seven tells you they're the philosopher who hasn't used their ability. The philosopher who hasn't used their ability. Interesting. Uh, what are they thinking about taking? Uh, they say they're thinking of going clockmaker because the third clockmaker is incredibly powerful, but they didn't want to mess up the night one clockmaker information. All right, that sounds good. That's fine then. Not a not a problem for me currently. Uh, and then let's talk to seat two. Seat two. Uh, seat. Two tells you they don't have any information yet this game, and they don't really want to say much about their role yet. Okay. So, they're just being a bit, um, cagey, we'll say. Uh, doesn't have much information, doesn't want to say much about their role. That might be an outsider, right? That's potentially uh, an outsider or a townsfolk with a, with, you know, that doesn't want to claim. Mm-hmm. Lots of reasons not to claim immediately in the script. There's some really powerful townsfolk on s and Particularly, there's some townsfolk who are super powered against certain demons, yep. but not against others. For example, the mathematician is very powerful against a Nodashi or a Vortox, or it's less useful against a Vigor Mortis or a Fangu. Yeah. The Oracle, on the other hand, is very powerful against a Fangu or a Vigor Mortis, but not so useful against a Vortox or a Nodashi. Yeah. So, <clears throat> all right, and I'm going to let you have one more. I think I said three, but let's do four. Four is a more round number. Sure, that sounds fine. And it's also your favorite number. That's true. Let's let's use it to talk to the player in seat nine. Seat nine tells you that they're the flower girl and they'd like you to pay attention to your voting today. The flower girl who would like me to pay attention to my voting today. All right. Um. So yeah, so let's let's talk about the Grim State real quickly. Uh, there's a Philo who's probably not going to go artist. I could clue the Philo in that I'm the artist and let them go artist after me, but they sound like they already have a plan, so I'm not going to disrupt that player's ideas. Uh, that's fine. Uh, the town crier in seat 11, uh, or their twin, whichever of the two of them is good, and I can go talk to the other one and find out if they're if they're a good and evil twin or not. Um, uh, that probably is a pair that's not going to be able to solve Vortox, uh, because they're both going to give different information, uh, because the evil twin may try to... Sell. They might give the same information, in which case we solve Vortox. If they give different information, then... You know, we might get evil twin, uh, we might get Vortox, you know, yeah, one of them might sell a Vortox world, so that's not going to solve it. Flower Girl might be able to help us solve uh, Vortox if enough people vote, um, so that's another possibility as well. Okay. I would use my, I could use my ability right now, so I could use my ability right now and get an answer about the twins to help us solve the twins later, and then if I feel like my information is if I feel like, you know, my information is Vortox or not, then I can get that answer. But I don't have to ask that question now, and assuming that I don't die in the night or get executed today, uh, I can ask that question again tomorrow when I have a little bit more information. Okay. So I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to survive one day as the artist without asking the question. I think it'll be more powerful tomorrow. Okay. Oh, and Milk, just so you know how this week's round is being played... You start with 20 points. Mm-hmm. If you die before you use your question, you'll lose all 20. Okay. If your question doesn't end up helping you solve the game, but it's an interesting question, you'll lose between fifth, 0 and 15 points. Okay. If your artist question, if you use your artist question successfully to help solve the game, you'll gain up to 5 points. You can finish with a total of 25 points. I see. All right, then. Uh, I am going to chance it for one night, though. I do think that it's. I do think artists tend to spend their question too early, in uh in most games. I also think seamstresses tend to go on night one, and again, I think that might be. I think that might in general be too early. I think it's probably worth trying to hold for a night. And if you lose, if you lose your ability because you held for one night, you know, it's sad, but it is what it is. All right. Well, during the nomination phase, the following things happen. Seat six nominates the seat. Four, and says, I hear they're in an evil twin pair, and I've also heard of a seamstress who hasn't known them, so they're probably just the evil twin. 
All right. Do you want to vote on this? Uh, no. All right. Well, you get a vote from... This gets a vote from seat 7, seat 9, seat 10, and that's it. Seat 11 doesn't vote on them? Seat 11 does not vote. That's weird. They look a little embarrassed when you look over at them. All right. So, sorry. Six, seven, nine, ten, vote. Six, seven, nine, ten, vote. That's fine. Um, that's fine. Okay. Sorry, just adding some custom reminder tokens. Mm-hmm. So the reason I'm not going to vote on that uh, right now on the Evil Twin claim uh, is uh, I haven't you haven't said that the Evil Twins have added publicly in town, uh, and uh, the other thing is a seamstress could be Nodashi poison could be Vortox at this point. So just because there's a seamstress that's saying that seat four looks like the evil one doesn't mean it's necessarily true. Okay, well, seat five then nominates seat two and dies. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> no, I assumed that was likely. They go, Aha! Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure we've found our witch there in seat two. I dreamt them as the witch or a townsville girl, which they were being cagey about their information, so I think they're just a minion without a bluff. And seat two goes, Was the role you saw me as as Oracle? I just didn't want to share my role yet. And seat five says, Oh, you've got your bluff now, I guess. Do you vote on it? No, uh, it's very unlikely that an evil player is, uh, that, I mean, it's possible that an evil player has gotten their, gotten the correct bluff, but it's a one in three that the, that the evil player is going to end up with the correct bluff, um, that a dreamer is going to see. Okay, well, seat six, seat seven, seat eight, uh, seat ten... Six, seven, eight, ten, seat eleven. How many is that? Six, seven, eight, ten, and eleven. That's five. We're gonna have say seat one also votes to put something on the block because hey, what if it's a four talks game? Mm-hmm. Okay, so seat two's on the block. Seat two is on the block. Do you want to make a nomination? Uh, now that the witch has popped up, yes, I will definitely make a nomination. Now, uh, I'll nominate seat. Eight. Seat eight. Okay. What's your accusation? Uh, I'm nominating for uh, potential town crier purposes in case there's a town crier in the town. Um, but uh, seat eight. Uh, I didn't talk to seat eight. I don't know anything about them. Yeah. No need. No need to push it. Okay. I assume it doesn't get many votes, but I'll vote no on it. No one votes on it. I'll vote oh, on you it. vote on it. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's going to be hard to track all this information in the Grim Tool. Maybe I should... It's a lot of information. Open a spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah. This is a problem with Sex and Violence. It has a ton of information that you have to track. Especially when you're doing fictional Yeah, scenarios. it makes it very hard for us to simulate Sex and Violence, to be honest. Uh, sex and Violence is hard to simulate because you need to track all of this information. Um, so, I'm just, so I'm just going to sit here and not have to deal with that. Uh, so six sorry (laughs) oh hello Artie Artemis is mad about something that's a real problem when you live with Artemis sometimes she just gets mad well you know that's all dogs really my ones are around here somewhere hmm so let's talk uh, for a second about the value of killing off an oracle. Um, oracle is a kind of... People consider it to be kind of a mid-tier townsfolk on Sex and Violets. Um, I mean, it can. it's really important on Sex and Violets because it helps with Fangu and Vigor Mortis, right? It helps with players dying in the night and solving the game that way. But also the information is fairly predictable, which makes it a really good bluff for evils to take because evil players can bluff Oracle and just give the obviously correct answer, um, and then they can use it to frame, like, one person sometime mid to late game. So Oracle makes a really good bluff, uh, so often you find that towns will devalue or undervalue Oracles and kill them off, kill off Oracle. 
Oracle claims fairly quickly. All right, and with that fun discussion, C2 is executed and dies. Poor Oracle. You obviously do not go to a grim. Yeah, I I figured. <laughs> uh, I don't have to worry about being Saranovist if the twins are real, uh, but I don't think these twins are necessarily real. I could use my artist question to try to solve it, certainly. But it sounds like there might be a seamstress that's already done their thing. I'm going to mark C6 as the seamstress because they mentioned seamstress. So. All right, when you wake up, seat three is dead. Oh, that's sad. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, I'll probably think about using my question today. Um, okay, well, before you use it, you can get three people's information. Uh, I'd like to talk to seat three. Okay. Seat 3 tells you that they're a mathematician who got a 1 on night 1. A mathematician that got a 1 on night 1. Hmm, okay. Math 1 on night 1. That's interesting, because as we've discussed on the podcast before, getting a 1 on night 1 is pretty unusual. It's fairly rare for mathematicians to get a one on night one what it means is either the uh dreamer was uh got false information um the snake charmer uh was poisoned and hit the demon uh it means that a seamstress was uh poisoned got false information or otherwise uh, uh otherwise uh, affected and uh, uh used used their ability or a philo did the same or it means that it's a Vortox game. Basically, that's... You also forgot Clockmaker. Oh, and Clockmaker. Clockmaker can also... Well, you got one point for missing Clockmaker, so now you're at 19. Oh, uh, great. I shouldn't have started the explanation. I wouldn't have lost points for not <laughs> giving the explanation. Yeah. There's there's very few roles, right, that impact that impact that that are impacted by Night 1 Mathematician. So Night 1 Mathematician means um, possibly Vortox. Which makes it more valuable for me to consider using my question to solve Vortox. We do have other puzzles to solve. Um, a question I'd like to, like a, a useful question I would consider asking, uh, if I if I thought it wasn't a Vortox game or I thought it wasn't likely to be a Vortox game, um, is um, to just clear, hard clear one player. Um, I don't think seat one can be the Nodashi with that mathematician number. Uh, so seat one is cleared of being the Nodashi because the Oracle wouldn't have gotten information and I don't ping a math number in that case. So this clears seat one of being the Nodashi. Um, it doesn't clear seat four of being uh, a Nodashi. Uh, it doesn't clear a Vortox at all. Um, if the Philo took another player's ability on night one, that would, that would give us a reason for this number. But I don't think this number is possible. This number isn't really possible in Fangu or um, Vigor situations unless the Philo did something. Uh, unless the Philo lied to me, basically, and, and took something else on night one. Um, so it could be Philo Snake Charmed night one. That's a possibility, but we'll just try to sort of rule that out. So we're looking for Nodashi and Vortox worlds now, which means that it is potentially worth it for me to go and try to solve for Vortox. Um, especially given that seat one can't be the Nodashi with that math number. Um, seat 11 could still be the Nodashi with that math number. So I'd like to talk to the player in seat 10. Ah, seat 10. Mm -hmm. Well, they tell you they're a clockmaker who got a two. A clockmaker with a two. Okay, so a clockmaker with a two could have been affected by a Nodashi. So my neighbor in seat 11 could be, could be the Nodashi. So it could be fake twins. Um, I want to talk to the player. So this is my third one. Your second, you your second one. You've only talked to seat ten today. I know. I talked to seat three first, right? Nope. Oh, you did. Sorry, you. Yeah, sorry, I talked to seat right, three. Talked right. to seat ten. So I'm going to talk to seat four, and I want to find out if seat four is claiming to be a twin. Seat four says, "I, I am the town crier. The evil twin thing was just a joke that seat and Adam and I were doing. Though we're not in a twin pair." Please don't kill me because we're in a twin pair. Um, that's not what's going on here. I'm the town crier. I got a uh, no yesterday. 
You're the town crier who got a no yesterday. All right. Um, I vaguely believe that no, unless seat six specifically is a min So that would make seat six a not a minion. I think I probably do have to solve for Vortox, unfortunately. I think using my ability to solve Vortox with a math one on a dead player. Now that that math one on a dead player could be a Fangu that jumped and is, is smart enough to know that they need to give a math one. Um, it could also be a dead vigor killed minion that needs to give a math one. But we're just going to go with the player who died on the first night isn't evil for now. Um, because I don't know why you would poison... I don't know why the Vigor would kill there. That would have to be a strong minion. Neither which, which doesn't particularly, uh, which is pretty good to poison. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, I think I am going to ask the storyteller question today, though. Okay, you use your question. What is it? Hmm, this is this is tricky. I'd like to formulate a question that that does more than one thing for me, um, but I also. Um, I also need to be careful not to make my information useless. So one way I could ask this question is I could use another player's information um, as part of my question. So, for example, I could ask in this situation, did the mathematician get a 1 on night 1? Um, a no there either means that that mathematician is a liar um, which I have to make a social call on that, or um, that it's a Vortox game, um, or that seat 11 or seat 10 is probably the Nodashi. Um, I don't have that. I don't have that available to me right now. So uh, I don't think seat one is the Nodashi. Uh, yeah, let's ask. Let's ask that question. Let's ask the question: Did the mathematician get a one on night one? Oh, you learn a no. The mathematician did not get a one on night one. All right, mm -hmm. so that means that either this mathematician is uh, lying or it's a Vortox game. Um, so that's really useful to know because that means the town crier's no is actually a yes. So we should, if it's a Vortox, we have to make a choice of whether we're going to trust the person in seat three. I don't know about that. I don't know about that choice. Um, but um, if this person is a liar, um, then we're going to go down the path of figuring out they're a liar later. So that means the player in seat six, uh, that means this is probably a Vortox game, and the player in seat six is uh, a minion, which means we should kill the player in seat six. Okay. Do you want to nominate him? Um, I'm potentially a witch curse today, but I've used my question, so it doesn't matter if I die to the witch curse. So yeah, I'll nominate the player in seat six. Okay. <clears throat> You nominate the player in seat six. You offer your accusation. Um, I think it's a Vortox game. Um, I heard a math number that suggests Vortox. Um, I used my ability uh, to make a determination about whether or not it's Vortox, and uh, I believe that it isn't. I believe that it is a Vortox game, and uh, there, uh, the player in seat six nominated on day one. And uh, there's town crier information that suggests that the player in seat six is a minion based on uh, in a Vortox world. Okay, seat six says, don't know what you're talking about, not a minion, just the seamstress. I got a no between seat one and seat four. If there's a math one, my information would be just wrong and I might be just sat next to a no dashi. Um, <clears throat> do you vote on it? Yes, I'll vote on this. Okay. So along with you, I'm going to say seat 8 votes, seat 9 votes, seat 10 votes, uh, seat 1 votes again saying, hey, if it's a Vortox game, we do just need to get someone on the block. Yeah, Spence Seamstress is perfectly fine to kill in a Vortox world. Yep, um, <clears throat> so you do all that. Uh, seat 6 is now on the block with 5 votes. Seat 6 is, I, I'm really just not... Evil here, I don't know what milk is on. I'm going to nominate. If it's a Vortox world, which I don't really know if that's true, then probably seat 11 is evil, because I haven't, I as far as I know, they're in a twin pair with seat 4, so I'll try seat 11 today, seat 6, nominate seat 11, and dies. Okay. 
So this is super, super useful for us mm -hmm. because it means that seat six probably isn't a minion. And that means that the mathematician number, uh, that means that the town crier information is wrong or the mathematician number is wrong. So going off of that, either the town crier is lying or the mathematician is lying. If the mathematician is lying, it's a fangu that's jumped um, and, or, or potentially a vigor, vigor killed minion. Um, a vigor killed minion would give the town crier false information. So I think it's likely that the mathematician is a vigor killed minion, not actually a mathematician. Okay. Uh, do you vote on seat 11? Um, do I vote on seat 11? Mm, seat 6 is still on the block, right? Yeah, they're on the block with 5 votes. Um, no, I don't think I want to vote on seat 11 right now. Okay. Well, so I'll say seat 1 and seat. Let me think about this for a second, because... If the seamstress is real and got a yes on the town cry, I got a no on the town crier and the player in seat one, then either their neighbor is no dashy poisoned, I'm no dashy poisoned, or seat one is evil. Uh, yeah, we can kill seat 11. Uh, it's actually fine to kill seat 11. I'll vote on seat 11, yeah. And so you vote on seat 11. Uh, I'll say seat one votes. Uh, seat four votes. No, seat four doesn't vote. They trust it. Um, seat one votes. You vote. I'll say seat seven votes. Uh, and then eight, nine, and ten all don't vote, so it's just three votes. Um. All right. Okay. Well, you know, uh, we've used our we've used our ability. Yeah, seat six is bodies, actually, and guys. There's no more nominations. You go to sleep. So we've 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 used our nomination, or we've used our ability, um, and we've found some information, right? Uh, we are killing into places where evils are likely to be, um, which I think helps. Uh, I think helps us out a lot. Both the town crier, yes. Both the town crier, yes. And the math number, I don't think can be. Let's see. So I asked if the mathematician got a got a one on night one. I was told no. The mathematician's one could exist. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I've gotten too deep in my thought. I've gotten too deep in my thought cycle. I might just be killing good players. But you know what? Sometimes you just have to go off of what you think is happening. So. Okay. Well, when you wake up, seat. Four is dead, and seat four says, "Thank God I have been pit hugged into the mutant night two. Sorry to anyone who was going off my town crier information. I was the starting town crier, but I was just the dead mutant. When I, it was just the mutant when I was giving my information. I didn't get any information." All right, so that means maybe this is actually a mathematician. I'm not sure. Yep. Mm. Uh, if it's a mathematician and they didn't get in one on night one, that still means it's a Vortox world. The SS no is wrong. I don't think seat one is the is the Nodashi. They could be a Vortox, but they can't be a Vortox if the town crier is good. Uh, yeah, we'd probably kill into, like, the left side of the Grim. I mean, there's not really a right side of the Grim left, but we'd probably kill into... Well, Milk, I'm going to let you have two conversations today, and then... Uh, I mean, I'll do one and eight, because I haven't talked to them, and we'll fill out the grim. All right. Well, seat eight tells you they're the barber. All right. That seems possible. And seat one tells you uh, that they are the... Um, they say, uh, let's uh, go with Snake Tremor. Okay. Uh, who have they picked? They go, uh, I've picked, um, you and seat two and seat seven. They go, I can't, I'm just the sage, I don't know what I'm supposed to be bluffing here to get killed. I haven't picked anyone the sage doesn't like. Alright. 
Fair enough. Um, okay. Uh, well, those are my two pieces of information. I don't feel any closer to solving the game with this info. Um, I maybe should have just used... A, maybe I should have just made a, like a hard Vortex question here instead of trying to get more information or, or sus solve a player. But I do think it's probably a Vortex game. Um, the information... Well, at the start of the nomination phase, the player in seat 9 says, I think at this point I just need to share my thought about information. It doesn't sound like we're getting a lot of other information. Uh, I got a no both knights, which doesn't make a lot of sense because every player who could be a no is dead. So I'm also leaning Vortox. Yeah. Um... See, Seven says, in the interest of full disclosure, I was lying about being the philosopher. I'm just your sweetheart. Um. Okay. Do you want to nominate today with these additional pieces of bonus information? Well, I think the witch is probably on to me by now. Um, but I also don't mind dying, uh, but I do have to find the right person to kill. Um, if seven and eight are telling the truth, they fulfill the outsider count in both Vortox and Nodashi worlds. Oh, seat 11 goes, oh, well, this doesn't actually make any sense because I'm the klutz. Cool. So just one of them is evil. Um, I guess it can. So the worlds we have are Vigor, who killed Seat 3, um, and poisoned the Town Crier. If the Town Crier's poison, then the Seamstress No means we should kill the player in Seat 1, and it's not a Vortox game. Um, if the Mathematician is telling the truth, then it's a No Dashy that has hit the Clockmaker or the Seamstress. Because it can't have been a no dashy that hit the mathematician, because that doesn't work, and they died in the night. So we're either in a world where uh, seat three is a vigor killed minion, a world where it's vortox, or a world where it's no dashy poisoning the clockmaker or the seamstress. So I would be inclined to kill. Uh, I would be inclined to kill seven or one at this point. One can be the vortox. Seven can be a. Uh, one can be the Vortox or the Vigor Mortis. Um, seven can be a Nodashi poisoning the Seamstress. Um, okay. So yeah. do you nominate? Uh, I'll nominate seat one. Okay, you nominate seat one. You immediately, of course, die. Yeah, I know. I'm witched. Uh, but that's fine. That rem that removes me, and we're gonna kill somebody today, and that gets us on five, um, which is not uh, it's not great, but it is what it is. It's fine. I just miscounted. I should. I assume known. you're not going to vote here on seat one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna vote. Okay. Uh, seat seven, eight, nine, and ten all vote. Seat eleven says something feels very wrong here and doesn't vote. But four is of course enough to put seat one on the block. Uh. Seat 11 nominates seat 7 and says, that felt like an evil team and one good player who was confused. I think seat 7 can just be an Odashi with an outsider bluff here. Yep, that's also possible. <clears throat> uh, do you want to vote on seat 7? No, I won't spend my dead vote here. There's some worlds where there's an evil dead already. Uh no, I'm too early and I don't know I don't know how many votes it's going to get, but I assume 8, 9 and 10 didn't vote on it, right? 8, 9 and 10 didn't vote on it. Seat 11 does, seat 1 does, no one else does. Yeah, I mean there's there's no way I can get to 5, so it's not worth it. All right. Well, that's all for the nomination phase. Seat 1 is executed and dies protesting the sage. And with that, I think we've sort of gone to the end of this scenario. Yep. So we're going to go through the burn milk, and then you're going to tell me how useful you think your artist question was. Sure. Probably wasn't very useful at all. Okay. Uh, well, it's not entirely certain. I am fairly confident evil's going to win this game. We'll just mark this as evil one. Uh, 
you just executed, of course, the sage. Yeah. Following the execution of the seamstress. Uh, the witch death of the dreamer. The execution of the oracle. And, of course, the night deaths of the mathematician and the mutant. All good. Uh, the seamstress was, of course, no dash you poisoned. As was Milk, the artist. Because the had... seamstress was no dashi poisoned. Yes, because we had the witch in seat ten, the pit hag in seat nine, the o- no dashi in seat eight, the sweetheart in seat seven, and the klutz in seat eleven. Yeah, that's a very lucky no dashi. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, I mean that's that's good. That's good. That's a real good one. You know, not much, not much, not much information. Right? There's literally no information there. All the kills were randomized. Yeah. Uh, part of the scenario was you were going to potentially lose all your points for getting randomly killed in the night because that sometimes happens to an artist. Yep. No, I mean I was always going to use my question on day one or two. Uh, on day one or two, um, I probably should have just hard solved mathematician. I mean, my question was never going to be useful. Is is ultimately the question? So my question was not useful at all because I was no dashy poisoned. Question was completely arbitrary. And as soon as you start talking about vortex worlds, the storyteller is like, "Huh? Well, this artist is getting some vortex information because they're poisoned." Yeah, I mean, there's just no way to. There's just no no way for my information to be useful. So, objectively, my information is not useful at all because it was poisoned. All right. Well, you lose. In, if your opinion is your information was not useful at all, you're going to lose 15 points for asking a not useful artist question. That's going to move you down to four points. The question might have been useful if I weren't Nodashi poisoned, but it wasn't useful, and it wasn't really solvable as Nodashi poisoned, just based on the just based on the positioning. So, it was, you didn't have this weird lineup of people who were alive and outsiders. Yeah, I mean that's that's a little bit odd. An open flower girl claim still being uh, alive was a little bit weird, um, but you know, again the inf- the information the information says that the Nodashi is probably somewhere in the bottom middle of the grim, which I did which I did sort out. But I mostly didn't sort that out using the question. I mostly sorted that out just by process of elimination of people dying. Yeah. And that's how that happens. That's just how evil wins. They, like I said, all these kills were completely randomized. All the witchings were were randomized except for the one on the Dreamer Night One. I picked that one out. The pit hagging was randomized. Literally everything was randomized. I don't think the choice of the I don't think the choice of the question was necessarily good or bad. It's just the world that we're in. It didn't solve anything. Right, and that can be a problem on Sex and Violets and how evil sometimes wins. There is just the information gets nuked quickly by a pit egg and a demon and a witch working together. I will say that I think I will say that I think the question was more useful than not useful because I did eliminate Fangu worlds, so that's at least something. Okay, so you can have five points back if you think that it was worth something. Nah, I don't really care. <laughs> it didn't go very well. <laughs> you know. So hey, maybe don't listen to me about artist questions. Maybe you should do an artist scenario because it doesn't seem like I did a very good job. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, fundamentally, you know, you don't have to use your artist question to try to solve the Vortox. I ended up doing that because it felt like a Vortox game, because the information pointed to it potentially being a Vortox game. But you don't have to do that every time, and you certainly don't have to do it on day one. A question I like to ask with artists is, is such and such a player good? You know, and I tried to to try to kind of combine that information. I tried to combine that tactic with a Vortox-ish question by asking, did the mathematician get a one on night one it didn't necessarily work out but that's okay well well, let's very quickly transition to our next scenario because we are actually on time crunch today for some reason i can't explain for reasons that we're not going to talk about all right reset the grim let me get in here Welcome back, everybody. We're going to kick into our second scenario this week. Uh, Emma is going to be playing as the witch. Emma, you want to tell us a little bit about the witch? Yeah, the witch, I think, generally has two real powerful turns. One is, of course, the first turn, where you can then create paranoia in everyone for the rest of the game if you can get a successful witch nomination kill. And then, again, in the very late game... Uh, the witch becomes more powerful because, once again, it's it just starts accelerating the game under pressure. Particularly if you can get a witch kill on four alive or five alive, it becomes very, very powerful. If someone gets on the block on five alive and then the witch curse goes off, ooh, that's spicy. So, 
As the witch, what I would do is I would socially pick someone I thought was likely to nominate on day one, based off my play experience with them in the past. Which, unfortunately, is tough to do here, because I don't know much about seat 10 or seat 6. <laughs> They're not real people, They're... <laughs> Emma! <laughs> uh, so, with that in mind, let's get out my handy random number generator. Well, before you do that, Emma... I want to I wanna give you a little challenge of, of my own making, and I'm going to play this much like you played the first scenario by giving you information from players that you select each day. Mm -hmm. I don't think that the witch is necessarily going to be the most responsible player for the evil team winning, and you can't determine necessarily who is going to nominate or vote each day because there's no social reads to have here. So there's not like a person that you can go, oh, that person always nominates on day one. So I have randomly determined which players will nominate on each day. Three players will nominate on each day. And we will be determining how successful you are based on what roles you're able to kill off using your witch ability and the randomness of nomination choice. All right, that sounds fun. So, first of all, who's on my team? So I know who I'm cursing night one. Your team, uh, let's go out to the grip. All right, your team is going to be your demon, uh, who is in seat two. I'm going to go ahead and mark the character for everybody uh, for everybody at home uh, right now, uh, but obviously you haven't uh, got their information uh, quite yet, so we'll, we'll, we'll get that for you. And your other minion is in seat six. So it's it's two, four, and six is the evil team. All right, well, seat one is getting witch cursed. Congratulations, seat one. All right, seat one gets the witch curse. All right, Emma, seat one has gotten the witch curse. Let's, uh, let's, let's go ahead and start the very first day. Who would you like to talk to? I'm going to give you four conversations on the first day. All right, uh... Let's talk to seat nine. You talk to seat nine. Uh, seat nine lets you know that um, they are the juggler, and they're going to be juggling today. Okay. Uh, and they were wondering if you would like to tell them your role. I say I don't really want to tell them your role, but it would be sort of funny if you juggled me as a, a minion, maybe, and then... We can use that to sort of suss out who's lying, because you'll know you'll get a zero there. Okay, that sounds really good. Thanks, Emma. All right. Pick another player. Uh, let's talk to seat six and hope they've already talked to the demon by the time I get to them. Uh, indeed, seat six did go and talk to the demon immediately. And uh, seat six says, hey, I'm the Serenovus. No, don't even have to change the token I put down. Mm-hmm. Uh, the player in seat 11 is mad today as the savant, and our demon is a no-dashy. Fun, fun, fun. Mm -hmm. uh, the demon is bluffing artist. I am going to, uh, I'm going to go flower girl and probably uh, try to make up some funny sounding information. So the roll or the bluff that's left for you is philosopher. Perfect. So I'll go ahead and mark the uh, I'll go ahead and mark the bluffs here on the grim for the viewers at home. We've got an artist bluff. We've got a flower girl bluff, and you've got the Philo bluff. No, oh, yeah, no, I'm claiming Philo mutant this game. That sounds like a lot of fun. I look forward to that. All right, so you got two players worth of information out of seat six. You want to go for another one? Yeah, we'll talk to seat ten. All right, you go over and talk to seat ten, and seat ten says, "Oh, hey Emma, um, really interesting information here. I'm the mathematician. Ooh, fun! And I got a one. Ooh, spicy, spicy. Yeah, very interesting. So that's uh, that's possibly uh, possibly uh, you know vortex. I, I watched your great uh, breakdown of the mathematician on grim scenarios so I know all about how the mathematician works so we're gonna be looking for clockmakers and and snake charmers and seamstresses and philosophers mm -hmm. you could even this could even it's it's most likely an audacity with the one the vortex can get to generate a zero on that one if any of those characters are in play and that makes it look more like a vigor of pangu mm -hmm. so the one is makes me think it's an audacity. 
Uh, I'm the philosopher. I decided to go fight a mutant yesterday, um, so that the real mutant, if they are there, can break madness freely. Uh, I think that's fun. Okay. But if the mutant gets executed and I die, so we can look at my neighbors as potential no dashies, so that's even double fun. Okay, that sounds really, really useful. Um... Okay, uh, yeah, uh, what are you? Oh, you're the Philo Mutant, right, okay, great. Yeah, yeah, the Philo Mutant. Okay, cool, thanks. All right, one more, Emma. Uh, let's talk to Seat 3. You're gonna talk to Seat 3. Seat 3 says, hey, what's up, Emma? Not much. Seat 3 claims to be the Sage. Hmm, and, okay. Um, says, yep, yeah, they're... They're probably gonna probably gonna be hanging around for a while because evil's probably not gonna kill them. Okay, yeah, I say. Well, I'm the Philo mutant, so cool. Okay, the Philo or the mute? No, no, you are the Philo mutant. Oh, the Philo mutant, not the Philo or the mutant. Yeah, I you think it's really mutant? cool. Hmm, okay. Yeah, I think it, it protects the mutant, which is fun. And in the chance that it didn't protect the mutant, either you or C5 are probably just the no dashi, so we can kill you easily. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I guess that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, makes sense to me. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, okay, so you go back to town. Um, seat 11 uh, uh, publicly claims to be the savant uh, and gives out some savant info information that you know is not true. It is completely made up because they're mad as the savant. Um, the player in seat 9 uh, juggles. Uh, the player in seat 9 juggles you as the Saranovis, juggles the player in seat 7 as the Oracle, uh, juggles themselves as the Juggler, juggles the player in seat uh, 11 as the Savant, and juggles the player in seat 12 as the Clockmaker. Okay. Um, the player in seat 5 juggles. The player in seat 5 juggles the player in seat 2 as the Artist. The player in uh, seat three as the sage. The player in seat six as the flower girl. The player in seat eight as the dreamer. And the player in seat uh, 11 as the savant. Cool. Um, the player in uh, seat two. Uh, the player in seat two says, uh, I think we should be cautious about our information. Um, I've heard that it could be a Vortox game. Mm. Um, the player in seat six nominates the player in seat five. Okay. Uh, they say, uh, they gave me a role that I think is probably expendable. If it's a Vortox game, we need to kill somebody. Um, and they're somebody. Uh, the player in seat 5 says, uh, yes, uh, I am uh, willing to, uh, I, am, I am willing to die here, uh, I am the, uh, I am the seamstress, and I have already used my ability. Uh, so the player in seat 6 noms the player in seat 5, uh, and the player in seat 6, the player in seat 8, the player in seat 9, the player in seat 12, all, uh, 6, 8, 9, 12 and 2 all vote on this do you want to vote on it no nah. all right uh you don't vote on it and the player in seat five uh, who has claimed to be the seamstress uh, who has used their ability where's seamstress there it is uh is not put on the block would you like to make a nomination emma no i'm good all right um the player in seat nine nominates the player in seat three Player in seat nine says uh, they seemed a little bit cagey when I talked to them. Uh, I think they could be an evil player, kind of um, maybe a minion who's caught without a bluff. They didn't. They didn't necessarily seem like they knew what was going on. Uh, player in seat, seat three says uh, I lied to you about my role, but uh, I am in fact the thing that I said to you. Uh, so yep, not a problem. Uh, seat nine votes. Seat uh, seat nine votes. Seat ten votes. Seat 12 votes and seat 2 votes. Uh, player in seat 3 does not vote on themselves. Do you wish to vote on this? Mm, I'll vote, but it's not going to put them on the block, so. Correct. Uh, you vote and uh, seat 6 votes, so it does, in fact, put them on the block. Oh, well. 
you gaped into that vote order in a very strange way. Uh, I start. Oh, I started in the wrong place. Oh, I'm so, I started with the person who was nominating. No, so you should have had the first vote. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you vote. Seat six votes. Eight, eight, nine. So if you didn't want to vote because you're the first vote, I can take that back. No, no, I would have voted as okay. the first. You vote. vote. So yeah, you're the first vote. So you vote. Uh, seat six votes. Eight, nine, uh, twelve, and two vote. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Uh, and then uh, one more player votes, uh, or one more player nominates, and that player is the player in seat 12. The player in seat 12 nominates the player in seat 7. Uh, and it's, again, the same thing. Uh, I talked to them today. Uh, they were a little suspicious in our conversation. I'm not sure, you know, they seemed like they could be, they seemed like they could be evil. Seat 7 says, I'm not evil, um, just didn't want to tell you my role. And that's it. Uh, 9 and 11 vote, but by the time it gets to you, there are no additional votes on this. Okay. All right. Uh, so the player in seat three is executed and dies, and everybody goes to sleep. And I, the storyteller, visit you in the night. Emma, who would you like to put your curse on today? Seat eight. I'm going to curse seat eight. All right. Thank you. Let's try to beat a dreamer. All right. You wake up uh, the following morning, um, and uh, you wake up the following morning, and the um, storyteller says that the player in seat 11 has died. The player in seat 11 claims klutz and picks the player in seat 10. Okay. Player in seat 10 says thank you. Uh, and that's it for now. Uh, you can talk to three people today. What three ple- people would you like to get information from? Seat one. You go and talk to seat one. All right. Uh, seat one says, "Hey Emma, um, I'm the uh, I'm the town crier, mm-hmm. and I got a no yesterday." Oh, uh, interesting. Uh, I'm the final mutant, so if you're the mutant, you can just say so, probably. No, I'm not. I'm not the mutant. I'm just the town crier. Okay, if you say so. Mm-hmm. Marking them down as the mutant. Okay, that sounds good. Um, I'm gonna talk to C12. All right, C12. C12 says, "Hey Emma, uh, I'm I'm not the juggler. I'm actually the clockmaker, uh, mm-hmm. and I got a I got a two. Oh, maybe C12 is telling the truth. Huh? Fun. Yeah. Well, you can sort that out." Uh, anyway, uh, I'm the clockmaker and I got a two. What are you? I'm the Philo Mutant. Philo Mutant. That's very exciting. Um, well, I hope that works out for you and the mutant, you know, doesn't die or whatever. Or does die. Or, yeah. I don't know. Whatever it is you're trying to do. Well, I'm trying to protect them, but if they do get executed for breaking mutant madness because they're under my protection, then we just kill suit five because they're probably the Nodashi. That seems right. Uh, all right. Uh, anybody else you want to talk to? You got one more. I seat five, obviously, the Nodashi. Ah, uh, yes, you go and talk to seat five. Seat five says, uh, hey, Emma, I don't know, it's weird. Uh, I've got a seamstress yes on seat one and seat nine. So I th- okay. think they're just good. Or they're your two minions. No, I mean, if, okay, I mean, if evil had seamstress as a bluff, I mean, wouldn't they use it to, wouldn't they use it to you know, make the demon look good instead of making the minions look good. Hmm. But they would think they would think that, so they'd do the opposite. Hmm. That does make sense in a strange way. Uh, anyway, I'm not evil. I'm, I'm just a seamstress. I'm happy to die for the Vortex if we really think it's a Vortex. Okay, I'm the Philo Mutant. You're the Philo Mutant. Okay. Um, I guess that makes sense. That sounds like the kind of thing you would do. Mm, it is the kind of thing I would do. Mm. Uh, okay, everybody comes back to town. Um, uh, the player in seat 11 uh, says, uh, Hey, uh, everybody, I just wanted everyone to know that I actually am the klutz. Um, I was made Serenovus mad uh, as the um, savant yesterday. My savant information was not useful. Uh, it wasn't true. I just made it up. So um, I just want to let you know that. Uh, the player in seat 2 says... Um, hey everybody, uh, I, uh, I'm the artist, and I used my artist question today, and I asked, uh, I asked if the demon is seated between 
seat nine and seat five, or seat five and seat nine clockwise inclusive, and I got a yes. So I'm not sure what that means, um, but uh, that's about half the grim minus the two dead players, so I figured that's a pretty good artist question. So yeah, my artist question was, is the demon seated between seat five and seat nine? And I got a yes. Uh, the player in seat three says, uh, hey everybody, uh, I just wanted to let everyone know that uh, I am not in fact the, uh, I'm not in fact the thing I claimed yesterday. I have a different role. I'm not going to tell you what that role is. And with that, the player in seat eight nominates the player in seat two and dies from the witch curse. Woohoo, we did it! The player in seat 8 says, Oh, I shouldn't have nominated. I knew, I knew I shouldn't have nominated. <sighs> That's so bad. Um, alright. Uh, thanks. Thanks, everybody. Um, uh, I, I think the player in seat 2 is evil. I got a bad social read off of them. I was, I was the sage. Uh, the player in seat 2 says, I'm not, I'm not the, I'm not evil. Uh, I'm the artist, uh, but, uh, I don't mind dying here if it's useful um, because, you know, I've, I've used up my ability, but I think there are better kills for today. Um, and with that, uh, the, uh, the vote goes around. Uh, seats 10 and 12 will vote on this. Uh, nope, sorry, starting in the wrong place again. Uh, so do you want to vote on your demon, Emma? Uh, whose hands are up currently? Uh, currently, the hands that are up are, uh, let's say, 9, 10, and 1. Yeah, in that case, uh, we would take five, nine, ten, and one. Yeah, I'll vote. Okay, you put your hand up, nine, ten, and one, all vote, uh, and uh, seat two uh, does not go on the block. Uh, seat two nominates the player in seat five and says, um, this is a person in my uh, artist information, which now looks a lot stronger because the player in seat eight died uh, to the witch. Uh, so I think the demon is somewhere between uh, seats uh, 5, 6, 7, and 9. So I'm just nominating a person in that information. Player in seat 5 says, I'm the seamstress. I'm not evil. Uh, I've got uh, a yes between the player in seat 9 and the player in seat 1. Uh, would you like to... Oh, uh, so uh, they uh, so they go on the block. Or they uh, The vote starts. Uh, seat 6 votes on this. Seat 7 votes on this. Seat 12 votes on this, and seat 2 votes on this. You're the last vote. Do you put it on the block? Yeah. All right. You vote on it to put it on the block. Uh, the player in seat 5 is on the block with five votes. Um, one uh, more nomination. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to nominate. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can nominate then. That's fine. Yeah, I nominate seat 9. You nominate seat 9. Okay. What? And I get the following accusation. I've heard of a clockmaker... Two in the clockmaker, I've got a very good social read off of. Based off that number, I think we're looking for a minion and a demon who are two seats apart right now, which I think is probably me in seat six, seats five and seat seven, or seat seven and seat nine. I don't think it works with seat ten ever being a demon or a minion here because of where the clockmaker information is coming from. I guess seat two could be a demon if you think I'm their minion. Um, but yeah, that's just where I'm thinking right now. So I think we can leave it on seat 5, but I just wanted to sort of think through this in my head. Maybe I should nominate seat 7, because they're the most likely to be evil player here besides me, and I know I'm good. All right. Um... And why have I just gone on this monologue? Yeah, you don't get five votes on that. But what are you doing, Emma? I am telling my demon... Kill seat 7, 10, 10, 12, and 1, please. Do not kill into 5, 6, 7, 9. Correct. Uh, the demon doesn't want to kill into 5, 6, 7, and 9. Uh, they, w giving out this information uh, with their own artist question probably suggests that they're trying to frame people in the bottom of the grim, which means, ideally, the team doesn't necessarily want to kill players that are in the bottom of the grim, uh, so the demon will be killing into other other players. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure my demon understood the importance of killing around clockmaker information. Yep. Kill seats one and twelve, or eight, ten. That's right. Not the other people. <laughs> if there's if there's one if there's one thing I know how to do, Emma, it's play as a demon. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, seat uh, five is executed, and you all go to sleep. Uh, and uh, who would you like to curse tonight, Emma? Oh well, 
I am going to curse 1, 12, or 10. They're the only people worth cursing. I'm not cursing anyone in the bottom. Curse 1, 12, or 10. Okay, which one do you want to go for? Let's go for... Let's go for... Who's the... So the demon... A lot of demons will kill the one, either the town crier or the mathematician here. I think it behooves the demon to kill that poison town crier. I'm going to hope they kill the poison town crier, and I'm going to curse the mathematician. All right. Uh, you curse the mathematician, um, and the following morning you wake up, and the demon has killed that poison town crier. Uh, and I think we'll probably just kind of finish out here a little bit, because I think... Uh, that player probably has to curse. That pr player almost certainly has to nominate today. Um, it's worth noting that the player in seat three was the player who uh, triggered the math number on the first night. What do you think the player in seat three is? They triggered the math number? Mm-hmm. Yep, on night one, the mathematician got a one. God, God. The player in seat three tr was, the, was, the, was the one who triggered the math number. No, did you have a poison snake charmer pick my demon on night one? They're the dreamer. Wait, so what's seat eight up to then? Oh, seat eight's the sage. Seat eight's the sage, yep. Yeah, yeah. So seat three is the dreamer. We'll go through the grim real quickly. Uh, so the no dash, of course, was in seat two. The town crier was being honest with you when they got a no, uh, even though uh, minion nominated because they were no dashy poisoned. The dreamer in seat three uh, got false information on the first night uh, on a, a good player. Uh, but it doesn't matter, again, because uh, they were poisoned. Uh, you're the witch, uh, who got two kills in this game, probably, because I imagine you would end up killing the mathematician here as well. Um, the seamstress in seat 5 cleared 9 and 1 together, uh, which means that 9 is probably cleared in this situation, which is bad for the evil team, but, you know, the seamstress could be evil with them. Seamstress can also be no dashy poison by me or seat 6. Yep, so. so it's possible that there's other worlds to create there. Uh, seat 6 is probably the frame in this case as well. The no dashy is probably just trying to frame their Saranovus here, uh, uh, especially if the town crier poisoning gets out. Um, seat 7 is the oracle, uh, who didn't really come out with their information because it wasn't necessarily that useful, or at least you never talked to them, so you didn't get it. Uh, the player in seat 8 was, in fact, the sage who was bluffing Dreamer. Uh, the player in seat 9 was the juggler. Uh, no, it was not the juggler. It uh, was the sweetheart uh, who was claiming juggler uh, and just kind of got glossed over by everyone. Uh, seat 10 the math. Seat 11 is the klutz who got killed by the demon on the first night and cleared the mathematician. I wanted there to be a pretty clearly not evil player there. Uh, the clockmaker got a 2 because you're seated two seats away from the no dashi. Uh, and that's your game of sex and violence. Yeah, and I maybe should have cursed myself there um, just to further clear my no dashi. Yeah, that does help, I think. Cursing yourself there does help clear your no-dashi. Um, I do think um, something that's useful to think about here as well is that when you got the clockmaker number, uh, it's something that, that evils can do really well and probably something we should talk to at length at some point about. Um, when evils get a clockmaker number, when evils get good information that seems right, it can, they can use that to backfill other pieces of information. Anyway... Thank you all for joining with us this week. It was really fun as always, and as always, keep your scenarios grim. Bye-bye.